Hey, good morning once again to all of our options traders and happy Wednesday. And I'm going to take a little different approach for this video from our normal videos. Usually there are more specifically on options, but I think this is a critical concept that will help you to make better decisions or at least use a little more caution in your approaches. And I came up with this idea because I hear traders all the time talking about what they think is going to happen or they ask others what they think is going to happen. But in the financial markets, there are millions of combinations of things that can happen. And that means your intuitions and your predictions are likely to be wrong. So there's a couple of really good examples of this, two of my favorites, so I thought I would share them with you. So let's go take a look at birthdays and lotteries and why your intuitions are likely to be wrong. And before we get started, as always, please be sure to click like and subscribe. It's truly appreciated and helps to promote the channel. So let's start off with the birthday problem. This is a famous example in statistics. Anybody who has had statistics has probably seen this problem. But there's a reason that it's so good because it is so counterintuitive. So this problem was actually first published by Richard von Mises in 1939. So it's been around for a long time but still continues to amaze. And the question is, how many people must be in a room to have a 50% chance that two birthdays match? So we're not counting the year, just the month and the date. What does your intuition tell you? So we do know if you had 367 people in a room, that would give you a 100% chance that two will match. That's a, assuming that we also include leap year. 365 days in a year, possibly somebody born in a leap year, that would be 366. So once we've covered the board, so to speak, with that 367th person, we know that there is a 100% chance to have a match. So the question again is saying, how many people would we need in the room to have a 50% chance that two match? So before we look at the answer, what does your intuition say? Most people are going to guess somewhere around the halfway point, 180 days or more. But the answer is, surprisingly, 23. And actually with 23, the odds are ever so slightly in your favor that you will have two that match. So again, it is totally counterintuitive, but here's the math behind it, or at least one approach. Now, whenever you're trying to figure out problems in statistics where we're saying a problem that at least two match, we're not saying that exactly two, but at least two, we always start by saying, what's the probability that we get no matches at all? And then we just subtract it from one. Because if we know the probability of no matches, let's say, is 70%, then the probability of at least one match would be 30%. So that's the approach we're going to take. So here's the way that it works. Let's say we've got a room. We have one person entering the room at a time. When the first person walks in, there are 365 days out of 365 days to choose from. We're not going to count leap year in this example. So we know that this person has to have a date on one of the 365 days. When the second person walks in, assuming we're trying to not match, there would be 364 days out of 365 for this person to have a birth date outside of what the first person had. When the third person walks in, there are now 363 days out of 365. Fourth person walks in 362 out of 365, and so on. So if we multiply these together, because we're assuming that these are independent, we're not at a twins convention or something where we have higher probabilities for birthdays to match or that they don't match. So we're just going to take each of these terms and continue multiplying down until we get a number close to 50, then we'll subtract it from one and that will give us the probability of at least one match. So right now we have four terms. How far down the list do we have to go? Well, here's an Excel spreadsheet with exactly that calculation. Here's the numerator, 365 out of 365 gives us one. 364 out of 365 gives us 0.997. When we multiply these together, gives us some number, we subtract off one. Probability of these matching would be 0.003. So look what happens as we keep going down. Here's person number four entering the room, five, six. We come all the way down here to 23. 
and there's a 49.3% chance of no matches, which means there has to be a 50.7% chance that at least two match. So that's the way, or at least one approach to figuring it out. Here's what it looks like graphically. You can see that as the number of people start entering the room, look at how quickly that probability goes up. So you can see right here between 20 and 25, right there is the 50% mark. And look at how quickly it starts rising. So actually all the way up here, if you want to push close to 100% with 50 people in the room, you're actually closer to a 100% chance, not with 365 people like most people would think. It only takes about 50 people to where you are almost 100% certain that two will have a matching birth date. Now there is a point of confusion that some people say there's no way this can possibly be true. And the reason for that, or at least one of them, is that they are thinking the question is, what's the probability of matching my birthday? And that's asking for a specific date. Now, in order for that to be true, we would have to do exactly the same math that we just saw, but you're going to have to go down 253 rows in that Excel sheet before you find a 50% chance of having at least two that match. So that would require 253 people in the room to have a 50% chance that they match your birthday. But now watch this, for people who have had combinations and statistics, if we have 23 people in a room and we choose two of them, there are 253 possible combinations. And so it's far more than the 180 days or so for the exact half point. And so that's another way to see why it's becoming higher and higher probabilities that you are going to get two that match. So here's another way to kind of visualize it. If these are all of the days in a year, let's say that as people start walking in, we record their birth dates. So you can think of it like throwing darts at this calendar. And after a while, you start getting a lot of places that, remember, you're trying to miss. And it starts becoming fairly crowded. This is a good visual to show why it's not totally unlikely that you're going to start getting matches. Now again, the reason that people misinterpret this is they'll say, all right, here's the first person that walks in. Let's say this is his birth date. When the second person walks in, they say, all right, if he doesn't match this one, then we don't have a match. But when the third person walks in, look what happens. This person's birth date might match this person's, but it also might match this person's. When the fourth person walks in, we will get six possible combinations. When the fifth person walks in, we'll get 10 possible combinations. And so they're starting to grow out of proportion. And that's another way to kind of see why it's becoming more and more likely that we're going to find two that match. But it's a wonderful example of where your intuition is so likely to get fooled just because it doesn't seem possible. And again, this is why you have to be careful as options traders to say, oh, because of this happening, or we've got this candlestick pattern, therefore I know this is going to happen. Or the Fed had just made this announcement, and therefore I know that the market's going to start rallying. There are far too many combinations to try to keep track of. And this is a really good example. Now there's a similar problem that I like to show, and that is a lottery problem. Now here in Florida, where I live, the lottery is six of 53 numbers. It used to be six of 49, and now it's six of 53, which is what I think most states are. And here's an interesting question. What's the probability that two consecutive numbers are drawn? And the reason this is a good question, if you look at the way that most people draw their numbers, such as in this graphic down here, what do they do? They tend to spread things apart. They can't imagine that you would get two consecutive numbers. It just seems like it's throwing the ticket away, but that's not possible. But here's the probability of getting two consecutive numbers. So just meaning like 18 and 19 or 40 and 41. So here's the six numbers from the lottery. And let's say the 47 remaining. All right, so let's say this is our winning combination, one through six. We have 47 numbers remaining. So take a look at the spaces between these numbers. And that's assuming we don't want to have two consecutive numbers. So I would have to look at all of these spaces in here. 
So there's 47 numbers. Each number has a space to the left of it. 47 also has one to the right of it. So we have 48 spaces in total. And so the way that we could figure this out is to say out of all of the combinations, or 48 factorial of all of these combinations, we could insert these six winning numbers. And that would be six factorial ways to undo those. And if we figure this out, it's going to come up to be about 12.3 million different combinations. But if we look at all of the possible combinations, it would be 53 choose 6, or almost 23 million. So that's the probability of winning all six numbers, 1 in 23 million. So if we divide these out, in other words, having no consecutive numbers, that's going to give us 0.5345. Just like we did with the birthday problem, we subtract it from 1, and that tells us there is a 46.5% chance that you are going to have two adjacent numbers. Now, under the old rules of 49 choose 6, it was 49.5%. Almost half of the lottery drawings would have two consecutive numbers, and yet very few people will ever do it. It just seems so counterintuitive. And if you're picking your numbers, you're sitting here going, why would I want to put two consecutive numbers? It just seems stupid. That would never happen, and yet it happens half of the time. Now, there's another thing to understand about this. Again, back to this example of, let's say, that the winning sequence is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and people just think that could never happen. Well, if you're looking at all consecutive numbers, yes, there are far more ways for numbers to not be consecutive, but that doesn't mean their probability is less. Any combination of six numbers is just as good as any other combination. So in some states, they have shown that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 is the most common pick, or sometimes lucky 7, 7, 14, 21, 28, and so on. They are just as good as something that seems more random. And again, it's going to just go against your intuition, but it's just another case of your intuitions that are just being fooled. So remember that when you are trading options, one key to take from this is don't trade options just because you think something's going to happen. Instead, use long-term goals and make use of the long-term upward bias. And most important, understand your hedging, rolling, and morphing to hedge unwanted risks. Because no matter how sure you are that something's going to happen, chances are your intuitions are wrong. And for anyone who'd like to learn more about the art and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course, Strategy Lab, and a candlesticks and technical analysis course. It's all at optionsa-z.com. Also, please join us on Options A to Z's Facebook trading group, and you can find a link in the description below.